StarCast 5, presented by CarShield, July 29th to 31st in Nashville, Tennessee at the Nashville Fairgrounds. Loaded with stage shows including Renee Paquette's Sessions with the American Dragon, Brian Danielson, Soraya, Turning the Page, The Horsemen reunite on stage for one last ride, and Bret Hart's look back at 30 years later on his SummerSlam Classic. And of course, StarCast will be capped off by Ric Flair's Last Match. Follow the story leading up to the last match over at RicFlair'sLastMatch.com. Tickets and information available at StarCast.com. Any other thoughts from the Raw Show Monday? Yeah, I see a lot of people talking about Austin Theory and him being buried and him being them, them being done with him and th- all that. I know what I believe to be the case and what should be the case is you need to now rebuild Austin Theory because look at how this guy has been portrayed a lot. When has he been portrayed as the most serious he could be? It was for a few moments when he was standing next to uh, Seth Rollins when Seth was going to get his cult together and Buddy Murphy was there, like Buddy Matthews, whatever. Like, that's as serious as he's been. He's been the kid of the Garganos. He's been this Vince weird guy that takes selfies and has been a goofball, like... That's not how you build somebody up. Again, the things that people remember and want to gloss about, like a John Cena build or something like that, about, well, he did these goofy things. No. Look, I don't care if he was touched by Vince here, which is a bad way to say things, but whether he was Vince's handpicked guy or not, how he has portrayed Austin Theory has been goofy and I don't think has worked and certainly has not peaked him to the potential where he should be right now, especially if you're going to spend this much time on, on the show with him. So to tear him down a little bit and have these guys like a Lashley or a Drew McIntyre or a Dolph Ziggler, which I know is tired for a lot of people, but these these older guys who are sharks in the water here like they should be the ones that now tear this guy down a little bit and he's got to hold his own against him and build himself back up because that's the only way people are going to actually believe this guy long term that's the only way they're going to do it because he does not have a cool factor like roman reigns he doesn't have that so the longer he goes and is not over and the more they push him is one of the few stars it's not going to work and i think one of the ways you can do that is by having a six or an eight pack of people usually it's six that you can rely on and i know people are tired of the names right now to hear lashley or mcintyre or sheamus or ziggler or or kevin owens but you know what if you amplify those guys you bring walter in you bring in somebody maybe from nxt a couple people maybe that have been forgotten about that was always a great paul Heyman thing to bring guys up that people t-bar that somebody has forgotten about put a new coat of paint on them and give them an existence and a reason to be there and without vince there you should not have the concern about giving up on something after two three four weeks so that is a simple change that can be made that i think would help matters and as again sheamus falls off hopefully you have a let's just say Braun breaker or whoever it is that you bring up you have them there to kind of slide up and be that person and again getting rid of the brand split as you've argued for a long time would help matters immensely because without brock without reigns there you might as well have drew and sheamus and and butch and everybody over on raw and you might as well have it the same way on smackdown when it comes to the women and any other help that you know alpha academy that can be given on that side well, here's the deal. This brand split, I mean, I, I talked months ago that the brand split was basically done. And then, you know, there was a correction from someone within WWE. Well, it's still there. We're just not really. A... Bro, the brand, the brand split's already done. Like, there's people that show up on both shows. It's all done. Here's the thing with this theory, bloke. I got nothing against the guy, okay? But I think it would be a disaster. To have him become champion at SummerSlam, oh god! I should yes. say it. I didn't, shouldn't say it. It would be a disaster. No, like they're, they're not going to go out of business or whatever. Way to end. Reigns has got a seven hundred plus day reign, and you have presented this guy like this. No, flat out, well, it's not the time. And any wrestling look, nobody's wrestling instincts should pop for that. Nobody's. Well, listen, I don't know. I don't know what they were going to do on Saturday, 
But I do know that Vince has devoted 45 minutes of television time on every show in the last month to Austin Theory. So much time, okay? I also, having watched WWE for a long time, I, uh, I know how this guy thinks a lot of times, but not every time, okay? And if you pay attention on SmackDown... Brock Lesnar beat the holy hell out of Austin Theory. On Raw, Roman Reigns beat the holy hell out of Austin Theory. So you're telling me that Vince's idea was to spend all this time on this guy, beat him up on the SmackDown Go Home Show, beat him up on the Raw Go Home Show, and then beat him on Saturday? I'm not saying, okay? That was, that was not Vince's idea, but Vince is not there. No, Vince Vince did write this, this show Monday, okay? You're right. So, You're right. I don't know if his idea was to put the title on him Saturday, but I have seen him build people up for titles before, and this is totally his wheelhouse, okay? Now, here's a big question. Let's say that Vince's whole idea was to build this dude up to uh, go in there Saturday, Brock and Roman kill each other, he cashes in. Or, you you guys remember my idea? Did I mention my idea on this show? Because I'm the king of horrible ideas? Yes, which was. Okay, my idea is this. I'm not advocating this idea, okay? Brock and Roman are doing their match, and they're just killing each other. And uh, something happens, and both of them fall into a hole or whatever, and then a bunch of stuff fall on top, so they're both trapped in the hole, okay? They're both trapped in the hole. The ref goes, one, two, three, yes, I'm going to count to eight, four, got to have the drama here. Five. You're like, my God, they can't get out of this hole. Six. Six. Seven. Seven. And all of a sudden, Austin Theory's music hits. He runs down to the ring. He gives the referee the briefcase. He stands in the ring. The ref goes, eight. Nine. Ten. Oh, no. And (laughs) no. So he did nothing but stand in the ring. This is so, this is such Vince's wheelhouse. This guy, this guy that you're supposed to hate, backdoored his way into this title. So anyway, that's what I figured they were going to do. I, I have Vince no McMahon idea. Vince McMahon or Vince Russo there? I have uh, no idea what Vince's plan was <laughs> other than whatever. But listen, it doesn't matter because guess what? Now he's gone. Okay? So all I know is if I'm Triple H, nothing against the guy. But it's not his time. And I realize that a lot of people in the history of wrestling have become champion when it seemed like it was too early, and they finally sort of made it work, even though it was early. You know, when Brock Lesnar was called up from Ohio Valley, it was way too early. But he made it work. Kurt Angle was called up too early. He made it work. I mean, I suppose it's possible Austin Theory could make it work. But to me, it's not time. He's not ready. He should not be the undisputed universal champion with all of the top belts. And so I would make a change if that was Vince's plan, and I would not have him win that title. It's just not time. He's not the guy right now. Exactly. Exactly. And I know that's always been one of Vince's tells is to do something like that. It's like having somebody beat Giants on the way up to conquering the top of the mountain. But as you've mentioned with Theory, it is just not the time. And him losing, frankly, if he's going to catch it, cash it in, will do more for him long-term because you do, to me, have to strip him back down and build him up a little bit. Him beating Brock Lesnar or Roman Reigns right now, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. And to me, if you want to keep the briefcase on him, that's fine. Let him continue to ride with it. But you've got to figure out a way to build more credibility behind that guy as you go along with this. And it just showcases, again, how bad they need fresh stars to get elevated up. And I don't know who those people are other than names like 
There is Braun Breaker. I think Carmelo Hayes's future is now a lot brighter now that somebody else is in charge. Same thing with a guy like a Giovanni Vinci. I think if those guys get called up to the main roster, I'm not going to say it's going to move heaven and earth or anything like that, but I think guys of that size are going to have a better possibility, as are the guys like a Braun Breaker. Look, Von Wagner, they obviously like because of his size. They've let him actually talk here a little bit, you know, as as we see what happens with Robert Stone. But, like, those types of guys coming up, they need to be cracked into the, the, the tier here at some point. And I don't think you can wait until the Royal Rumble for that. I do hope they start making some sort of moves and bringing some people up and freshening things up and not having it beat people like Mandy Rose. Because with all due respect, unless you're going to bring up Mandy Rose, put her on the main roster with Sonya and they make them a tag team, I'm great with that. If you're going to bring up to have them feud, I've already seen it. I don't want to see it. And I've seen what Mandy can do in NXT, and she still cannot cut a promo worthy enough to be on the main roster to take up 10 minutes of time. She still doesn't have a match that makes me want to see her any more than you, a number of women on that roster. So bringing up the right people from NXT, too, not just because it's time to bring them back up again because you don't want to cut them. I'm sorry. You know, there's other things they can do. Be on the coconut loop. Be on level up. Do other things. But I don't want to see the same projects over and over again when we've seen projects like Madcap Moss, who's still got a crappy name, who should go back to being Riddick Moss, still never get an opportunity or his shot. Hey, let me say something, by the way. So I know... One of the reasons they're so behind Austin Theory is because he's young. And I've heard many times, it's always my favorite, well, they know they got to do this, but then they actually don't do it, okay? So I've heard this about you know Austin Theory. We, we, they know they need, we know we need young stars, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Until this whole thing happened with uh, whatever the hell they're doing with MJF, okay? Correct me if I'm wrong. MJF was one of the hottest stars in all of AEW, right? Facts. Okay. With the exception of the uh, diamond, dynamite diamond ring, which he won several times, with, with the exception of that, he never won a title at AEW. He never was the AEW champion. No. He never was the AEW TNT champion. No. He was never one half of the tag team champions. No. Yet he, as a young a young 24-year-old, I think he's 25 now, he was by far one of the biggest stars. He was the, one of the biggest, at times he was the biggest ratings mover in the entire company. The, the issue is not young people need to be the champion. The issue is we need young, fresh faces in the top mix. So if you want to shove Austin Theory, if you want to push him, great. That doesn't mean that he needs to be the undisputed universal champion and literally the centerpiece of the shows because he's not ready right now. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't do anything with him. That doesn't mean he can't be in a top spot. It doesn't mean he can't main event, semi-main event shows or main event Raw or whatever. But he doesn't need to be the champion for you to be pushing younger guys. Theory and Moss both need to be taken care of because they are at different points in their careers with different types of trajectories, but they are two people that they need to bank on short term and long term. And the more you take care of somebody now, the more it's going to pay off for you later. And a lot of that is believability. And a lot of that is having stock put into you by the fans. And I don't know. Mosses seems to be going up. I don't know if theories is there. And the response from MSG, I'm sorry. I know people think New York is overrated. It still means something. This is how the show begins, really. Asuka does a back kick. Camera cut. She does a back fist. Camera cut. She starts to run. Camera cut. She hits a hip attack. Camera cut. She drops to her knees. Camera cut. She throws a kick. Camera cut. She stands up and screams. Camera cut to people brawling on the floor. I was furious. Do you understand? I wanted to shut the show off and not watch anymore. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.